I'm going to I'm going to start. Can I ask you a question? Hello, first. I mean, going because you're nominated and rightly so for the brilliant responder, which you, well, in my money, stole the show. Can then um, can Thank you tell you so me? Much. No, but you just a brilliant, brilliant performance. And can you tell me when you got the script, did you have an immediate sort of gut reaction that you had to do it? What was the feeling when you read it? Yeah, firstly, I'm going to say thank you so much. Um, that means the world coming from you. So thank you. Um, and yeah, I did. I remember the first thing I felt about the script was um, the dialogue between the characters just felt like before anyone had read it out loud or before a read through it, I could I could hear it and see it so vividly. Um, and the conversations felt so authentic. And I was like, I, I, it, it just felt, it felt so real. And obviously that's down to Tony's beautiful writing. Um, and with Rachel, from the beginning, I could tell that there was something underneath what she was giving. And I was like, I, I didn't have all the scripts at the time. So I was just kind of desperate to know like, what's beneath this woman? Like I'm not, that what what I see or what's on the surface isn't all there is to it. And I, I just had this feeling, I was like, I, I want to know more and also I need to know more. Um, and that that's how I remember feeling and just being like I, I I have to do this like I like Rachel's mind like I have to do this because I I just I was like there's more there and yeah I just I just need to know um yeah so that's that's how I felt um and I love what you say about the authenticity and the the, lang the dialogue felt authentic because I think that's so important isn't it because I think sometimes you read scripts and you go People don't talk like this, or they don't it talk like this. Or, yeah, yeah. Or that there's no specific characters. Sometimes it just feels like, you know, it's words on a page attributed to. But when you get those scripts that you can really feel that person, the it, it's, it is like a buzz, isn't it? You just go, wow, this is, and that need to go. I have to do this. I have to. Yeah. I have to be part of this. Please, yeah. please let me do please. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um um and what you just said about like you can feel that character like that's how it felt every single character reading it just kept jumping off the page at me and then Rachel just she just took me like I was like no this I I just I have to do this um but I wonder if like did you feel the same about um Anne because I heard that you you didn't hesitate to say yes like you just it, to, to be honest when my agent rung and said there's a script coming in and it's to play Anne Williams. And I knew Anne's story. I mean, not in any detail. And I went, well, yeah, I'm going to do it. And he said, do you want to read it first? And I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, who's written it? All right, you, know, on, Kevin, <laughs> you know, Kevin Sampson. I went, yeah, that's going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it, you know. And then you have to play, you know, then you have to go away and pretend you're playing a bit cool and hard to get, you know, but that's not true. I'm literally going, have you, have you sorted it out yet? Am I doing it? When do I start? But um, yeah, it was, I mean, the script was fantastic. But I, for me, initially, it was because it was a real life character and I knew Anne and I just got, yeah, that feeling that you got about Rich going, I just hope when I read it, that they are authentic to her story. You know, that's the really important thing, which I thought Kevin, you know, really, really got. Again, it's like you said with Tony's writing. Um, but yeah, it's that, it's that feeling, it, it's... You know, I always see it say to people, it's not about going, I think I'm the best person for the part. It's just, I have to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not going, mm -hmm. nobody could do it as good as me. It's like, nobody wants to do as much as I do. As much as I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I completely you know. identify with that. Um, <laughs> did you, because you said that you um, you knew her story. Was there anything about um, Anne's story that surprised you or like shocked you? I think to the extent that the cover up from the police and the establishment, I mean, I knew there was obviously a cover up, but how deep it went. And yeah, I think, and just the battle that the constant battle that the families had. And once you start to unravel, because it was, you know, about the, um, just in case anybody knows about the Hillsborough football, um, oh, oh, football yeah. disaster, um, uh, when Liverpool played at Hillsborough and yeah, at the FA Cup. And 
I think it was that the 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 lens that the fam and then the other families of, of you know the those who were lawfully killed went to, and what they put were put through. I mean, it was hell, and that it's like that thing when you, yeah, you can't help but absorb that, and you just got to draw. I, the, the admiration I had for those people, you know, I just thought, how does anybody? But that was a real eye opener. But and and the same with you, you know, playing. Did you know? I know because Tony, what is was is a policeman. Did you? There was the things that you went. Wow, this is a real eye opener into the into police procedure and how you know the police function as an organisation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big question. Sorry. Yeah. No, Maybe no, it's not the time of the place. But yeah, <laughs> no, I think. Um, um, there was two things. I guess one's a little bit deeper than the other. Well, definitely one is deeper than the other. And one thing I learned was, um, which I think I'm consistently learning in life with different things, is that is how um, difficult it is, or how, it, you know, because Rachel's so uh, everything for her, or it seems everything for her is very black and white. And um, there's a scene in the show where they are with, um, they're with a man who, you know, he doesn't have any money for electric and he's really struggling. And, you know, she's saying, well, let's call social services. And Martin's character is saying, if we call social services for him, we're taking, um, you know, a, a service away from somebody who might need it more. And I just kept sort of thinking how many moral dilemmas one must come against come up against in one night and I think it, it it was it's something that you feel like you know but then until you're really sort of looking at it you go oh my gosh like what what do you do in that situation so um that was something for me that was quite yeah I guess eye-opening um and then another thing which blew my mind is how heavy the uh uniforms are they are, it's like wearing another person and the boots are so heavy. And, you know, a lot of the time we were running after, you know, characters or whatever. And I just thought having to do this day in, day out with this armor on your body. Um, I mean, I just was like, it's it just, just crazy. Um, I, I mean, obviously, you know, there's training and stuff like that, but it is, it's heavy. It's really heavy. Yeah. But did you get, once you, you know, the production started was there anybody saying look you know this is is going to be quite physical so you know was there any precursors to how physical it'd be like you said that weight of the the uniform or did anybody warn you did you do any training was there anything sort of sort of physical that they sort of what you know said maybe have a you know get yourself prepped or, or did they just throw yeah, you do some warm up. yeah go to the gym go and just run around um no yeah yeah we did have a bit of that and also we had a lot of training in how to kind of uh like how to handcuff somebody how to kind of restrain somebody um how to um how a police man or woman would uh use pepper spray because there's just there's so much that goes into it you can't just pull out a can of pepper spray and spray because you don't know who's around you have to warn people there's a certain stance so um yeah we had training like in relation to that and um that was really interesting and it just again it just it's something that I feel like I should have known but when faced with it I'm like there's there's so much to think about in a situation that is going off basically yeah well, I think what's interesting, just for you know, because I, I think quite a few of the people who were on the event at, at drama school, but I think you know, sometimes you will get those jobs that you're thrown in and you don't get any warning or you don't get any preparation, don't you? So it's always, I mean, it's brilliant when you do, but you know, it is about how much prep you sort of have to do when you're off your own back, not just about creating a character and you know, whatever your process is, backstory, blah blah blah. It's you know, sometimes, it, 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 you know, you have to really think on your feet and get get prepped, don't you, for those, you know, sometimes it's like you cast as a police person, off you go. And you're like, yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, we have, because we've got good imaginations, I think that's, but, you know, there's certain things that you can't just imagine your way into in ways, is there? So it's, yeah. And I just wanted to ask, sorry, and I'm completely hogging, but there was, 
one one of the many scenes that stood out for me was the scene when you were locked in the cupboard with your partner, abusive partner. I mean, for me, that felt so real. And I think one of those, again, authentic performances that I'd not seen for quite a while on television. You know, and I just, would you talk, because did Phil back was the director, did Phil? Phil Barrini, yeah. And I just got the, this is just from my point of view, watching the responder, I thought, whoever's directing this is an actor's director. Because so you can, I think you can tell. <laughs> I'm not. so and, glad you said that because exactly spot on. Yeah. Could you talk me through your sort of process and your collaboration with Phil? I mean, that's a big question, but like for that that specific scene, if, if I mean, obviously, you know, but it'd be nice to know some of the ways in that you got into that because it was so brilliant and so real. Thank you. No, yeah, he is um, very much an actor's director. Um, and he's an actor, so he um, he gets it. He understands. Um, he we kind of. I, I almost didn't realize that he was directing me when he was directing me because whilst um, they were, you know, everyone was setting up and um, we were just sort of sitting around and hanging out. He came and sat down next to me, and we he started talking to me about something completely different. But by the end of the conversation, we had um, a beautiful chat about that scene and you know what it meant and how I was feeling in the moment um and what I wanted to achieve what he wanted to achieve but it was such a low-key conversation that I didn't it wasn't until afterwards that I was like this is what that's exactly what I needed um because it took the pressure off as well and um once I got into the cupboard he uh very much gave me the time and the space to get to where I needed to get to. Um, one thing he did was let the camera um, roll and um, there were points where he would uh, just, you know, shout something out or say something to me um, whilst the scene was going on. And I think that really helped because with, with a scene like that, you know, sometimes you can get to where you need to get to and then they call cut and then someone's got to do this and do that and do that. And you can find yourself having to, go back in every single time um but I guess because he is an actor's director and because he is an actor he sort of understood that and he was like you're in that space let's just stay in that space and and see what happens and see what we what we find and yeah I really appreciate it because I think it helped me um it helped me immensely so yeah no it was it was so organic and I thought wow you know what I mean because again you know there's times when you don't it's just you know you're thrown into a scene and you've got to get to a place and you feel you know what I mean you've got to sort of get from not to 60 haven't you and so, and a lot of the time it is just when you get those jobs that you go yeah just give me you've got to give an actor time you've got give to give a minute. Minute. yeah and sometimes exactly. it's like and I can't just do it like that and and sometimes emotion's not always you know what um you know it's it doesn't always come out what's written on the page isn't it exactly. you know what I mean yeah, I know when I did Anne, I said, first thing I said to the director is, I won't be crying all the time. And he went, what do you mean? I said, I'm not doing sentimental. You know what I mean? There's a point where I said, this is, you know, my way into Anne. And, and then that moment when somebody does let go, like you did. And, and again, the brilliant scene when you go into the fire station, how powerful they are then when you can navigate just having, you know, those real moments where the emotion, because most people don't I don't think in real life do it we don't always let go yeah because we we so um the majority I, th I think the majority of people don't walk around sort of with all of their emotions from like you know yeah. front facing like we do kind of hold things back but um speaking of um you know having that moment to break down the scene um where you see Kevin's Polaroid on the um on the board is like I think one of the most devastating things oh my gosh what I'm getting it's <laughs> one of the most devastating heartbreaking things that I've watched and um I just thought I mean I guess similar to your question was there anything that you did to kind of get into that place and you know what was it like shooting a scene like that you know that's about somebody's yeah yeah you know it, it was heartbreaking to watch and 
yeah, I just just wonder. Well, again, we were given time with it, you know, and I I felt very lucky that, you know, I was working with Stephen Walters, who's a really generous actor, and it's not when you get those actors that you collaborate with and it's you feel the energy is going backwards and forwards and you feel the support and the trust. And I don't know, we were just very in tune with that. You, you know, I knew you, sometimes, you, you know, you know with certain actors, you're not going to have to fight for space. You're not going to, it's just going to play out as it should do. Yeah. Again, using the word authentic because I'm a big buzzword at the moment. For television, <laughs> you know what I mean? Being authentic, we've got to be up more, you know, I think there's there's definitely room for more. <laughs> Authenticity, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And then, but knowing, you know what I mean? Knowing, you know, that's the scene, knowing that that's the scene that's happened in real life, that, that you know, and that just, yeah, I mean, I couldn't, when I was explain what happened because that was one thing I, I didn't know as well how the you know the the families were asked to identify the loved ones I mean so just devastating but again just giving us time and in the room and the, the actor who played the police officer you know it was just that atmospheres can be created and I'm not one that I don't stay in character I don't like that because sometimes I think you can it creates too much of an atmosphere and sometimes you, you can't break out of it. But when it's the cameras rolling and everyone just slowly gets in and goes and just lets it breathe. And I think then, and it's not putting any expectation on yourself to achieve something. Because sometimes you can go, oh, this is a big scene. And so I must really get somewhere emotional. And you think it doesn't, you know, that's when I think it's sort of, for me, it's a bit of a kiss of death. Because then, yeah. I, you know, it, it, it Oh, yeah. oh, and especially as we know, you don't get, you, don't, you have to do it a few times, and you think, "Oh, I nailed that," and then they go, "Oh, sorry, the line wasn't right." Or, yeah. You know, your collar was up. You know, and you're like, "Oh, I gotta do that again." again. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's all that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> About you know sometimes, and especially I was thinking. I mean, sort of jumping up, but you know, again, in rehearsals, isn't it? It's like, sort of, I've always said to people, keep your powder dry, you know, because sometimes you want to. As soon as they say the words, they can have a, a huge effect on you, even if you're thinking, I'm only rehearsing, I'm only rehearsing, but it's, it's been able to sort of, and, you know, keep that back for when it's time to, to do your thing. But I always think it's not about putting pressure on yourself. And if the scenes mm. are going, isn't it? It yeah. meshes. Yeah. Then, we, we you know you get to where you sort of need to be yeah but, uh, I, I I absolutely I love that because you can you know get into the mindset of uh you know this is a really important scene especially if it's about somebody's um real life you're like oh, this is a really important moment and I have to make it this and I have to make it that but at the end of the day you can only do what you can do so you go in you take the pressure off and you trust the people around you trust people you're collaborating with and trust yourself so um, yeah, I, I really love that. And actually, just kind of in response to what you're talking about, how in between like scenes and in between takes, did you, were you able to kind of keep it light on set and like, or how, or how did you keep it light on set? Because, you know, you talked about kind of not wanting to have this atmosphere the whole time because yeah. it can create, you know, it can, it can, it can wear on you so how did you kind of keep it light or yeah how did you keep it light? yeah well I think it was just very much when a scene was over you know stepping away stepping off set going getting a cup of tea everyone chatting and again I always say to people oh well you know if they say I'm not being in character go, but we were a family we we're all talking and you know Bobby Schofield and everybody was playing Michael and you know we're all but it's, it, I always say it's part of it. It's all part of the bonding. It's all part of the getting to know each other. It, and you can, you know, I always think not to dismiss things that you think, you know, might not just, that might feed into it. And it, it does depend on people work, but I sometimes think you've got to shake it off to get back there again. I, my whole, I'm not an expert on it, but I do like Meisner and, you know, the technique and it's about looking and responding. And that's what it's about. It's about being in the moment, isn't in it? In the moment, yeah. And I think sometimes people take that moment with them and then what happens is nobody else can get in. And it's about somebody can give you something that you weren't expecting. And if you're open and and, and it's play, you've got to play. You've got to play. Got, if it's not fun, even in the darkest things, it's got to have an element of... I mean, fun, I'm not saying, you know, playing Anne was fun and a story was fun, but there's got to be an energy to it that if it's always down, you'll, 
you know, and we're storytellers, aren't we? You know, we're telling a story. We are not bigger than the story. Yeah. You know, I think that's what yes. you've got to always remember, I think, yeah. isn't it? But yeah. And and did you find on responded, did you have a good I mean you're not gonna say no I didn't, but you know, did you find it was all had a lot of support with the actors you were working with? Yeah, so um I mean kind of like what you were saying, it we had a a it, it it I mean we were shooting during lockdown and we were all in Liverpool um and it because I think that helped us feel there's a lot of camaraderie like we felt like a real team a real group um a real little family um and everybody really wanted it to everybody really really wanted to do a good job I felt that with the cast with the crew everybody loved the script loved the story really cared and you could feel that um it just and everyone wanted to play that's that's what you just said that's another thing I, like from scene to scene sometimes you just you, you didn't know what someone was going to throw at you and not in a scary way in a way to kind of throw you off but just like okay well that's how it's written we'll try that but let me just try this like let's just see you know and it was fun like I had I had a really good time every day on that set um because of that we all yeah we all really supported each other um which is beautiful yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and you can't put a part you know what I mean I think sometimes especially I don't know when maybe when you're younger and you first start out it's about it you know it doesn't all have to be angsty and painful it can be it can be it, it can be fun because you've got to be open haven't you and if yeah if you yeah. close exactly what you said if you're closed off somebody might give you something and because you're so like this and like I've got to stay in this moment you don't even see yeah what they've given you um and it is about being in as you say it is really about being in that moment and I think when you've got two actors three actors four actors five actors as many as there are in the scene and they're all in that moment and they're all there together I just think that's when the when the, I was going to say, that's when the magic happens, but that's actually <laughs> the corniest thing I've ever said in my life. Um, but that is when the magic happens. That's, I just, yeah. Oh, this is, this is quite an interesting question. Um, oh, there's two interesting questions. Okay, so this one, um, loving this. Thank you both so much. What makes an, what makes a director an actor's director for you? I.e., what do you love to get from a director? Yeah, that is a good... That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. For me, it's an understanding of the character and they've done the homework and they, they know your journey with you because, as we know, when you're filming, isn't it, you, you're filming back to front all over the place and sometimes, times, I don't know if you've ever done, you do that thing, you've done a scene and gone, oh, my God, of course, that happened yesterday and I forgot. Oh, and I forgot, no, yeah. No. I mean, yeah. you know, that wasn't in that minute because I hadn't... Oh, because you're just flying about, do it, you know, all over the shop. So it's it's some dues, but it's what you said about what for it's giving you time, it's giving you space. Because sometimes it's a bit just like, oh, just say you can be sometimes, just say your lines and get on with it. Don't bump into the furniture and get on with it. And it's just and being able to just have a, you know, not to, because I know sometimes you can do jobs and you'll be like, with an actor going. Right, we need to shoot now. We've talked about this for ages. Let's just do it. Let's sometimes Let's just, just do it. it. Yeah. But there is, it's being able to have that discussion, isn't it? Just being able to thrash things out and go, I'm a bit stuck with this. Can we explain this? I think this. And as well, it'll just let you just play it again. Try something. Yeah. You know, we're coming directors and go, like you say, this is the scene. But then, yeah, try something different. Do your own thing now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, not yeah. rewrite the script, but just you know, yeah. <laughs> actually, yes. as it happens, you know. <laughs> but yeah, how about you? How about I'm pretty much the same, if I'm honest. Um, time giving giving you time to to have a little chat about it, to try something new, to get to where you need to get to. I think time encapsulates all of it really um 
also trust you know and they kind of yeah yeah you know trust you to um trust you to get to wherever it is they would like you to get to and also trust you to the, trust you enough to give you something to try you know something that might seem a little bit of, you know off the beaten track and, and just say well try that and let's see like they trust you enough to to ask that of you um yeah I think I think that and and yeah pretty much what you said I I I totally agree because a lot of the time well, not a lot of the time but sometimes it is that thing of you you just yeah just go on say it done we've got it and you've you've what you walk away and you feel like oh I didn't really get I didn't really I didn't really play you know I didn't really explore I didn't you know so um yeah I, I, yeah, and, I agree and with you. trust in the direct, you know, sometimes you've got to trust them, you know what I mean? Sometimes it is, you know, I think that's a big, big learning curve for me. And I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to cause dissent within the ranks of younger actors <laughs> who are listening, but the director doesn't know it all. And I started off with the, di you know, the director knows it all. I mean, of course, it's sort of their vision, but then sometimes, you know, it is, it's okay to sort of, I don't mean take them as a challenge, but just go, look, you know, it's, this is not quite, I'm not feeling that and let's discuss it. And either you come to a compromise or, you know, but sometimes, and then, you know, cause I never rule really out like, somebody will say something and they go, oh, really? And then I go, oh, okay. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I'll give that a go. And then you go, oh, that really worked, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah, but I think it's, but it's trust both ways, isn't it? Because yeah. if you don't trust the director, you know, then, it's, it's safe isn't it it's feeling safe to go yeah. and if I make a fool of myself nobody's gonna go yeah. well that was rubbish it's just like let's try it should we try it again and maybe try it yeah. with a bit of this <laughs> yeah um there was one other one that was really interesting I'm just gonna put to us um uh thank you for doing this lovely session I'd love to know if the both of you have little rituals or cool downs you do to get out of character and back to yourselves. Oh. oh. Uh, do you know what I think for me it's it's like it's it's food. Like on set, a biscuit, a tea, a hot drink, something that like like makes me feel like myself again. So I'll just walk over to the tea table. I think that always takes me out of the you know out of the take and back into the world I think that always really helps me yeah yeah it is isn't it something I don't know it's funny it's like you say you drink our biscuits something that's a bit tap tap I mean you know what I mean yeah. you can touch your way back tangible to tangible. Yeah. <laughs> tangible yeah yeah and and just I'm t I mean I am I'm not terrible but I mean I do if I'm doing quite a heavy scene I then have to for my own sanity sometimes is come out and undercut it with a bit of humor just to but I think a lot of it's because it's like you know you feel a bit you're not embarrassed but when you've done the big thing and there's a crit and you're like oh that you know oh but yeah uh, no yeah no, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know what I mean you know is that all right you know so I think yeah. just to, but um but yeah and I always find it a bit decompressing in the makeup truck with the amazing makeup people just to a lot of the time I'll sit in, you know, I'll be like, oh, I'm not in any rush to go home. I'll just sit in and and have a bit of a, right, that's the day done. Yeah. And But I think it is good to try as much as you can, isn't it, just to sort of leave it. At, at the best on set, at, not in your Winnebago, if you have a Winnebago, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> if you get one. Whatever you're changing uh, space is nowadays. But just to, yeah, because it's so, I've worked with actors who take it home with them who and I, I I think you've got to have a good balance because I think you've got to be then clear try and clear your head for the next day as yeah. well yeah, yeah you know because presumably the next day is a totally different scene and the, presumably a totally different place and I just think it's kind of like you said earlier if you're bringing it with you you get stuck in a place and then you can't take in what's happening right in front of you so think it really is and also for your sanity as well and so that you are enjoying the job that you do to kind of figure out a way to 
leave it where it is. Um, I think humour is a great one. Um, I love, yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, when you just get a really lovely crew who at any given moment, you can have a conversation with anyone in the crew and just have a chat or have a giggle or have a laugh. I think that really helps as well. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And do you, do you, do you have like a, 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 cause I know people band you bird when they go, I'm a method actor. And I go, well, every actor has a method of getting there. It's, it's just different. Some people make a bigger deal about them. Yeah. Than other people do. You know, yeah. um, but do you have, you know, taking the word loosely, do you have, or, you know, do you have a, a, a very specific way of approaching a character or does it depend? Um, I think, do you know, I think for me, it really, really does. Um, it really, really does depend. One thing I always do is ask questions of myself about the character. I read the script, you know, multiple times and I always try and find new things to ask and new things to wonder about and, well, why is she saying this or why is she doing that or you know what you know what does that mean when he says that what would she feel this or would she feel that like what happens if she feels that and then but what happens if she feels this like I think questions is 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 definitely a big thing for me I I try to ask as many as I can um and I don't have to answer all of them you know but I think you know having having the questions there for me does really help um, I don't have a specific method, I think, that applies to each role I take on. I think it, I think it really does change, like depending on, on job to job. Um, do you, do you have a method that you I, I I wanna, feel it if you do? I mean, there's probably certain things, you know, I, I do like, just because I'm a bit, but, but I do like to do like a, a proper sort of biog of, you know what I mean, just because I enjoy it going yeah. okay you know and things like and it's just stuff hangovers and drama schools you know what music are they into if they're into music it might not be you know what's the favorite piece about what have they got in the pockets just basic things like that but just filling because I think sometimes what I find with you know luckily I don't think the tv scripts we're talking about we've been in related to this but you don't get a lot of filler you won't get you don't know where your characters come from you might know where they're going but you don't know so it's it's just you know it's it, it gives I think it's building a foundation of who are they and at the end of the day I mean I don't think any of us personally know who, who we really who we really are so it's fine to leave like you say not to answer questions and not to yeah. have questions and not answer them but I do like to set out a bit of a and I suppose that's why I like I play I like playing real life characters because a lot of that work's done for you it's done <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then you could fill it in but yeah, I mean, I do the old, you know, I do a bit of action in that I did at drama school, action oh, in activities, yeah, yeah, yeah. just because, again, sometimes if the script's not quite, I mean, if it's a good script, you shouldn't really have to action it because you know why you're asking and what your intention is. But, um, yeah, I think that, but again, it's like you, it depends on the project, it depends on the director, it depends on the other actors. Yeah. You know, if they've got a very strong way that they work and I go, oh, actually, that's quite interesting. I go, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll dip in a bit of that, right. you know, right. and, yeah. and 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 then sometimes not, you know. I've done it where I've enjoyed that. Sometimes people stay in character, and other times I've gone, I'm I'm going to have to go and hide by the tea urn because I don't want to get. It's exhausting for me, and I can't. You're like, I'm going to go yeah, and no. like, but I'm, you do I'm you. Just, I'm back in a minute, but yeah. I mean, I'm not being <laughs> facetious, you know. But it's and, and but I think as an actor as well, you've got to navigate that not everyone might have the same the same process way of yeah. working and I'm yeah. quite open to you know again if it's fun then I'll have a go you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah 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 but um no and and just because you know because you you studied law how much and you were saying about asking questions how much do you think that feeds your sort of you know studying law feeds into your work as an actor is there is there lots of overlaps or none do you feel or um I think in terms of the law itself, there's not there there is not much overlap. But in terms of like the study of law, like when I say about asking questions, like when you're in studying a, a law degree, um, so the thing you do before you do the LPC to practice, like 
that in that there's a lot of questions you're always debating there's so many seminars like you know you're talking about this case and that case like there's I think generally I've always had like a hunger for like why you know what I mean or like not like curious like um and I guess that does feed into my work as an actor because I'm, I'm always yeah I'm always asking always asking the questions or asking myself the questions and and sort of really thinking about it and sometimes I have to pull myself back and be like you can't think about everything too much sometimes you just have to be in the moment um because you know human beings aren't we're not we can't I'm never going to know everything there is to know possibly about one person so sometimes I have to pull myself back a bit but I think um yeah the curiosity and asking questions and wanting to talk about it and debate about it probably does come somewhere from my study in law and stuff like that yeah um yeah no I I, I think because that you know I mean I know it's but I mean I did a series many, many years ago where I played a barrister and just meeting people in the legal world, I was it's like very light actors. You know what I mean? There was such a, 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 yeah, I thought they're sort of the same animal in a way, you know, in mm -hmm. many, many ways. And I think it is about, like you say, asking questions, wanting to know. And that's the thing you think about acting, isn't it? It's, I think it's called play and it's linked to being childlike in a way because it is about being open and, and always asking, isn't it? Wanting to know. That's what keeps, I think, you know why you're such a brilliant actor is because it is about always questioning you know I think once you stop questioning and then you again it's about closing yourself down isn't it and it, then yeah you shut off when you um when you stop questioning um yeah I think one uh question that I really wanted to ask you was um so I, I heard that you got really really close to Anne's daughter and I just thought like how did, did that did that create a kind of added pressure I guess I'm asking in terms of the job actually it didn't it really didn't I mean it was brilliant because Sarah was so sort of open and generous yeah you know the first sort of time I met her and it was really interesting because she didn't you know when I turned up and they were like this is playing Anne and she was like I don't you know she said I didn't know who you were I didn't know what you'd done and blah 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 but she said I spoke to a couple of people who worked with them and oh she's she's like she should do a, a decent job you know what I mean but you never know and it's weird because somebody sits in front of you and goes hi I'm gonna play your mum so and she was so open and generous as were the rest of the family and then she's friends with so many of the sort of survivors so I was taken into this amazing little like community and actually I wanted to do right by Sarah but I just felt the support there was so strong and she was so behind the project yeah that in a way it was it was more of a it was a, a real help so I didn't feel pressure and I think actually so she would she would have told me if she didn't think you know she'd come on to set and and she was always there to talk to but in a way it was that's what I love, I really love about my job. One of the many things, but it is about the people you meet along the way who are not necessarily in the business. Mm. You get to meet, I've played a few, you know, real life people now that it's them or their friends and family. And these people have been through extraordinary, you know, have had extraordinary lives and been through all sorts of sort of trauma and, and just how open. And it's that thing, isn't it? Why, you know, without, I don't want to sound precious and we're not precious and you know it's we're great we we get to play for a living but when we do good things you know when you do things it's you know it's like the responder you know the character in that it gives people a bit of a voice it gives you know everyone needs a, a witness don't they and I think yeah for Sarah um and her family to you know have Anne's story on there you know and I'm sure there was stuff but they were great they didn't go well that didn't happen and this didn't happen and that was and she was never like well you're not really like my mum you know she got mm. she completely got that I could never be um yeah you know, it was just you try and get the essence of somebody you know but yeah it was and we you know I still you know I'm still in touch with her and I just feel really blessed uh, you, oh, you know what I mean you get yeah. people let you into their lives and you go wow yeah. that's a big a big deal how do you approach the challenge of portraying multiple contrasting roles within a short space of time Say if you're in a comedic role for one project and then a more hard-hitting drama role for something else, 
Are you able to switch on and off between the two quite easily or are there specific ways you prepare yourself for this? Ooh. Well, me, I think you take, I always take a comedy role and a serious role. I approach them the same way. Mm. You know what I mean? It's about creating a character and if, if the character's written well and it's a comedy, then they'll be funny. It should be funny, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's always about playing the truth, isn't it? You know what I mean? Playing the truth of a situation. All right, well, I mean, I suppose you're always conscious that it is going to be a comedy, but I think it, I think that is the thing, as I've got older, I know definitely I need more time off between projects to go from one to one to one because and and I... I it's a bit like an acting hangover, right? As you get older, they get worse. <laughs> <laughs> Your hangovers get worse. So you need a bit more time. But again, it's prep, isn't it? If you you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's prep, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's prep. And I agree with you that, uh, you know, a, a dramatic role or a comedic role, you approach it the same way in that this is a person, this is a character, and you, you just find the truth there. And like you say, if it's written you know well enough it should be funny and instead of sort of trying to play the funny I mean I guess sometimes you do kind of you know have to find the funniest way or whatever but if you're looking for the truth then I think you'll be fine and also I, I think um, if I'm going from you know one genre to another in a short space of time one thing that does kind of help is um it, who I'm surrounded by like you know the director because it's like what you said earlier about sometimes you don't know what scene you're in or what happened yesterday or what's going to happen tomorrow and the director can just quickly have a chat with you and say this is where we're at this is what happened in the scene before da, da, da. and just having um someone there who uh can just ground you and remind you of what world you're in and yeah I think I think that helps sometimes um yeah. yeah 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 no yeah what is one thing you would tell your younger actor self oh Ooh. I definitely I definitely say just too self-conscious when I was younger so I'd have gone for it more not been so nervous been a bit more front-footed when I first started off and and yeah and it's I think I said before but the director doesn't know it all so don't you know what I mean? yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you can challenge a little bit or not even a, not challenge yeah. like you know for the sake of it but yeah you know, but was, your yeah. ideas are just as valid like you can but I remember like auditioning and going into rooms and feeling petrified and less than and blah 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 and just go in and go in I think they pick up on that you've got to go in again it's everything we keep saying about fun and plays going go in with a I want this job and I can do it yeah, you know, sometimes I'll be like, I want this job, but I don't think they're going to give it me. Well, they're not, if you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If that's how you, exactly. If that's how you approach it, they're probably, they yeah. probably won't. Um, I think, yeah, I would just tell myself to, um, to just back myself more. And if I didn't feel like backing myself that day, just fake it. <laughs> like, yeah. just, just fake it and just just look at yourself in the mirror and say you're a value you can do this and if you don't get it it's not because you can't it's because you it just wasn't for you and that's okay you know just back yourself and then even um you know when when you you do get a role um back yourself in the sense that you're going onto that set saying yeah I'm, I'm very grateful to be here and I'm super excited and I want to be here but also I am I'm also going to bring value here and I'm I'm also worth having here you know as opposed to feeling like yeah oh my gosh I'm so grateful I can't believe that you've given me this and like oh I hope I don't screw it up and you know what I mean so yeah just back myself more I think I would I'd be like back yourself girl exactly and that's brilliant because you wouldn't be there if they didn't want you there and there's times when you you know and still you know I've been doing it for centuries now and there's still time that I still feel a bit apologetic and oh you know maybe you know you think nobody's interested and at the end of the day you're there because they think you can do it so so to do it you know but it is it you know, your confidence goes up and down and it's you know it can be all dependent on you know whatever's going All on kinds of it. Oh, just, yeah. just stuff you know you're not yeah. always but it's it's about yeah exactly back yourself and 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 yeah yeah and do you know what 
I think it's really, well, I mean, it's really important for me to hear that from you because you've had an incredible, fantastic, very career and you're amazing at what you do. And there are still times you're saying where, you know, you, do, you don't always feel your best or you feel a little bit apologetic. And I think that helps me. And hopefully other people know that you're not always, you might not always feel like a rock star every day and that's fine. You still just need to know that even if I don't feel it, even if you don't feel like it, you kind of have to know it that I'm 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 enough and I'm worth it and they want me here and it's fine. Yeah. So yeah, that I'm taking that away today. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh. When did you feel like you were an actor? Um, was it a certain job or when you began training? Ah. Oh. It took me about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's not a, you know, I was going, what? Yeah, I, yeah. I can't think of a certain job, but there was a point when I'd, I'd been probably doing it for about 10 years that I went, I can, I used to sort, you know, when you're getting taxes and people go, so what do you do for a living? And I go, I go, Sorry, no. <laughs> yeah. And then they go, you are what, an actor? What have you been in? Oh, what have you been in? And everything you say, they've never seen you. Just None of it. Oh, my gosh, I hate that. I hate that. I've, I've learned to just really say, oh, I don't know now. I don't know. I don't know. Because I'll be like, oh, this. And they'll be like, no, never seen it. No, never seen that. What are you talking about? And I'm like, this is the most embarrassing thing ever. But it, yeah, I don't know about you, but it did. I mean, it took me a, a you know, a long time but I think it was always I was always I think at drama school we always said you have to earn your stripes which I think is a bit mm. outdated now you know what I mean yeah. but at the time yeah. we were all you know that's it you know you've got to be doing it for you know put the graft in at the coal first before you can really say you know cool, you are yeah yeah um it's interesting I feel like I think probably when I started at the drum so I went to a drum school called identity drum school which was a part-time drum school and I think when I started there I I felt like an actor because it was kind of the opposite they kind of say to you you guys are actors so you guys have to you got to work hard like you've you know there's no time to waste like you're actors that's that was the, the kind of environment I was in but it took me a long time in myself I was like oh I'm an actor but it took me a long time to say that to other people confidently to be like I'm an actor I'd, I'd always you know if I had a part-time job or if I was at uni I'd be like oh yeah I'm in uni or oh I did I work at this place because I don't I just I, I don't know I just didn't have the confidence to say outwardly to other people you know I'm an actress that's what that's what I do so it took me yeah years before I could confidently say that but I love the fact that you tr identity that they said you are an actor, and the fact that it's part. You know what I mean? That the drum there's, there's training out there that's part time because I I mean this is a another a bigger thing for another day, but it is about who can go to jump the amount of time. You know, three years I think it's far too for me, but you know, for far too long. Who can afford three years? Who can you know? Blah blah blah. You know, you've got a life to get on with. But the fact that what they said to you there and then you're an actor and you've got to work and get on with it is, I think that is. That's brilliant. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. I mean, yeah. Now that I think about it, it is. It's incredible because I I felt very much like, oh, okay, this is my craft and this is who I am and this is what I have to go out and do. Like they they were sort of like they, yeah, it was it was a yeah, that's the kind of environment it was where it was very much like when you guys walk into the room, you guys are actors. Um you need to take this seriously, you need to take this training seriously. Um, and maybe because it was a part-time drama school and, you know, they, they didn't have us consistently. So they, you know, maybe wanted to compensate for that and, and really instill that kind of um, thought process in us that we are actors and this is a part-time drama school, but if you want to be here, take it serious. It, it was very much that environment, like, take it seriously, guys. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm very grateful for that actually, yeah. Uh, this one is for you, Maxine. Um, I am a mature woman who started acting training last year. 
do you feel the industry is becoming more positive towards older female roles? Uh, yes, I I think it is. I mean, it's 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 got a long way to go as it's, you, you know, I mean, I'm not doing down, but, you know, you look at the, the I think it's problem, you know, the, the group I'm in for the nominees, I, I think apart from Vicky McClure, old, old, older, I mean, I've got a problem with the fact we're all white, but that's that's another question then to go, yeah. what are we doing with, you know, older actors, you know, female actors of colour, you know what I mean? Mm. There's a whole, you know, there's a, we've still got so much work to, to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a long way to, to go, um, you know what I mean? Because people can't be in categories if there isn't the opportunities for them to be the in categories. Roles, that's yeah. the, the roles are not there and not there in abundance. And yeah. and they're not there that for for projects that will get because to be honest when I got on you go I'm not saying I'm not saying I went oh this has got factor on it but you know certain projects will possibly be in the running because of subject matter so blah 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 but I think it's getting I think it is getting better I think for me it's still the stories that women are still allowed to tell even though a role might be for an older woman what is it saying I still think there's certain tropes about being an older woman that I'm a bit like I'm an older woman I'm a bit I'm a bit bored with that and that doesn't speak for me thanks yeah. very much yeah 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 so yeah. that's you know and do you find with roles you just you know what I mean that people go oh well there's lots of roles now but that that not necessarily again about being authentic or feeling that there's a storyline that you go well I don't want to tell that story because that doesn't yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I, 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 I think you hit the nail on the head. That, yeah, that it, it is. You know, we it is better, and there are, you know, maybe more of those those roles than there were before. But the the stories, or like what the stories are saying, or the stories that are being told about a black woman or some, you know, me in a role. Sometimes I'm like, what? There's so many other stories to be told um uh in terms of being a black woman I mean yeah. it, it, you, do you know what I mean um because I'm yeah. a woman I'm I've lit like a, <laughs> I'm a human being that's experienced all what the world you know what the world is to offer the same way another human being woman has as well there's there's just so much to say and I think like you said we we've got a long way to go in telling varied stories um so that that's one thing I would I'd love love to see so well and who tells the stories being yeah. more women you know telling the stories about them themselves so more that older does. more older mature women more older mature you know black black writers with black actresses you know and it just it just needs it's who's a, who's allowed to tell the stories and I still think we've got a problem there that we look that there's still it still feels quite male dominated writers on female stories yeah so there's still a you know I don't yeah ways to go no yeah. yeah I agree there's still a ways to go there and, and and yeah who's telling these stories who who yeah who's writing who's producing who's who's yeah so would you write do you write do you I I have <laughs> I have started writing I just in that in that millisecond I just thought to myself you're doing what you did when you couldn't say outright you're an actor when you were younger I have started writing I'm a writer I'm a writer I'm a writer guys but it, I feel like I haven't earned my stretch yet I can't call myself a writer but I am I am writing yeah, yeah. well that you're a writer that's brilliant yeah do you brilliant. are you you do you write are you a writer? I write I write theatre so I've written quite a lot of oh my well, gosh yes what am I saying no yes. no no but I mean yes. but again it was a bit of I sat round tables with friends and we all moaned about there was no parts for women or the parts that we were, were a bit like I don't want to play you know at one point for me it was all sort of women on desk you know on the cusp of the fertility you know disappearing into the, the ether and the desperate you know and I thought oh I just got to a point where I went I can't if I read one of my, <laughs> one more of those scripts that are not yeah. particularly, you know, blah blah blah. So and then I I just thought I want to write. I just want to write about women, but they they're not defined by who they're going out with and what of what the what the fit what's the state of the fertility. You know what I mean? Yes. So, yeah. So yes. I did, but I mean, again, I was it took me ages to go, and I still go. Well, I write. Am I a writer? I write, but I I felt, you know, I kept saying to friends, we can't keep sitting round 
coffee tables, moaning, I've got to do it. And I never went, oh, I, again, it's not like oh, I think I'm a good writer. I just thought, stop moaning and, and get on with it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I 100% agree. And that was kind of my motivation as well, that you want to tell a particular story, put pen to paper and tell it and, you know. Brilliant. Um, and then there's one more here. Uh, I am a Northern actress and as with so many, I have faced my fair share of rejections. Do you both have any tips, methods or methods for switching off once you have auditioned and being okay with either outcome? Um, many thanks, huge fan of you both. Um, I think one really simple thing for me a uh, really simple trick is if I, you know, go into a meeting where I have to do a tape and I've got um, sides, I've been sent sides or I've had, you know, sides given to me at an audition, um, I will rip the paper up, put it in recycling, or if I've been sent it, I will delete the email. That really helps me go, I'm not holding on to that. If it comes back around, it comes back around, but I, I can't, I sort of can't um, see it. And the other thing is what I've kind of what I was talking about before, you know, and talking to my younger self, which I've learned a bit more now, is to back myself and go, look, I've done what I can do. I've given it what I can give it. And if if it's a no, it's not because of it's not because I'm not good enough. It's because it wasn't for me. And that's OK. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's especially if you really want something, sometimes it's still hard, you know, but. I think that's just that's yeah I've, I think I've come to realize that that's part of the journey um yeah and exactly and get the yes it's, it's a very sweet feeling you know yeah. so but it's like I love that about just that's such a good piece of advice to get rid of it and you know what I mean you've you've and then it's in you know if because it's not lingering there on and you can stew on it and so I have arguments with friends and they go, oh, I didn't get a job. I mustn't have been good enough. I went, it's not about, it's never about going in the room and being the best person. Very rarely, I think it's about, you know, I always say to people, it's like when you read a novel, you see somebody, don't you? You have somebody in your, either the way they behave, the way they look, the, and then that person comes in and you go, oh, that's, the, that's who I had in my imagination or that's how I saw it. And if you, there's nothing you can do if you're not how they saw it, you might be the best actor in the room and give an ama amazing performance, but they just got it's not quite. So it's I just not think quite right. Yeah. it's not about because I, I really, you know, I've got friends who are sort of my age who were still like, I didn't get it. I don't know what I did wrong. And I'm like, you didn't do anything wrong. Please, that you can't go down that route else. It's just yeah. it's it's just like you say, it wasn't for you. And it's hard and you've just got to get, you, I mean, it's sort of that thick skin, thin skin. I always think as an actor, you've got to have quite thick skin. They've got to learn to ways to deal with it and go, that's that's fine. And let that go, you know, and then thin skin for when you're acting and being open. But yeah, the, it, it's part of it. It is part of being an actor. I love it's that. Just, thick skin, thin skin. Yeah. I love that. It's a bit, it's a bit like a vent. You have to put yeah. the thick skin <laughs> yeah, on you shut it. All your yeah, I can now. And, yeah. yeah. And and stuff. And you will get feedback from, you know, I was chatting to a friend today and we were laughing about feedback we've got from auditions. And you think, oh my God, I can't believe they said that. I can't believe they said this to us. And you know, and it's but yeah, it's all it is sort of as much as part as your process of creating your character and doing your work is learning to navigate that side of it. 100% yeah. just as important just as important for you know for your happiness and your sanity it, it's a yeah it's just as important yeah and not and again you know not everyone's you've just got to go that's their taste doesn't mean they're right just because they didn't pick you doesn't mean they're yeah right. they're, they're right. exactly exactly because it, it's very it's all subjective exactly, exactly. it's all subjective <laughs> at the end of the day and that's why you know that's what makes I mean that's art that's creativity it's all it's you know so yeah totally agree with that just because they it doesn't yeah it doesn't make them wrong it doesn't make them right it just yeah it's just what they wanted and that's okay exactly yeah good luck to them that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I have I've done definitely that said that before but not with not with as much positivity. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but I'm I, past I've, that been, now. I've done that where I haven't got a part, and then I thought, oh, I really like that part. And then I've watched it and gone, oh, oh, right, I see. Oh, God, I didn't do that at all in the audition. Yeah. That's brilliant. That completely is, you know, that's, and you just go, oh, I see. I, I, I get did it now. Completely, I went at it a different, you know, way. Yeah. I came down the mountain the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, not that way, you know. So there's, there's, you know, I'm, I must admit, most of the time when I've not got something, I watch it. I go, oh yeah, oh, I can see why they went, yeah, with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't really want to admit, it, but that's the truth. Yeah, like, and oh, it's not well, actually yeah. that's that's really cathartic. Is to go, good. I'm glad they got it, and actually they've done a really good, and that's re- they've done something. It's just different than I'd have done, and it really works. And let it, you let, can it, let it go. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. just wasn't for you and that's yeah, it that's exactly. you know what I mean that's what it's it is so, yeah 